one would wonder how Spain uh, converted 87% of Filipinos into Christianity using Latin. Uh, in the late 1950s, television was introduced in the Philippines, and I watched uh, Superman, uh, Popeye the Sailor Man, and Lassie the dog. Uh, none of these are Filipino or Filipinized uh, characters. We are multicultural or possibly just obedient people. We didn't travel farther up uh, north than Baguio or farther south than Manila during our long summer vacations. But I often wondered about other places in the Philippines. When I learned to write letters, I tried to make pen pals with children very far from my town, Sorsogon, Cagayan, and Palawan in southern Philippines were pretty exotic to me. There were no responses to my letters, but it is possible that my dad might have kept uh, some of them if there were any. In high school, I learned about Philippine history and the colonial periods with Spain, the United States, and even some war years with Japan. But the Filipino culture was primarily learned by living it. I don't remember a single school trip to a museum, although we had yearly folk dancing programs. In college, we read and discussed our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal's Noli Me Tangere, uh, which means touch me not in Latin, an important piece of literature that became a rallying point of the 19th century Filipino revolution against Spain, uh, brilliantly written entirely in Spanish and the title in Latin. While the Ilustrados Middle, these are the middle class Filipinos of the 19th century, spoke Spanish. The great majority of the Filipinos, then as now, didn't speak it. Yet they all rose up in big numbers in the name of freedom. It was the hero's public death by firing squad on orders of the Spanish government, along with a series of other executions of Filipinos that sparked the Filipino-Spanish Revolution of 1896. There was uh, segregation during the hundreds of years of Spanish colonial rule, distinguishing the pure-blooded Spaniards from half-blooded Filipino Spaniards called mestizos and pure-blooded Filipinos. Filipinos did not know much about their culture due to colonial rule. But at the right time, uh, a drop of Filipino blood was all it took to bond and take up arms for freedom. That powerful bond was the result of cultural identity. Now an American citizen and living in the US longer than I have lived in the Philippines, cultural identity still follows me in this country not to me negatively, but in contemplation of who I am, I always thought of none other than being a Filipino. The question now is how Filipino am I as a Filipino American? How Irish is an Irish American? How Italian is an Italian American? How Chinese is a Chinese American? I am not unique on this issue. Every day, I make choices according to my identity. One definition of cultural identity is the total of inherited ideas, beliefs, values, and knowledge which constitute the shared basis of social action. The deciding factors are racial, geographic, linguistic, philosophical beliefs, including the religious and spiritual, and behavior. In other words, cultural identity defines who we are as individuals, making choices 
as members of a social group or a nation that are bonded together on a common goal. The merits of cultural identity are a deeper sense of self that builds trust, confidence, creativity, hope, ambition, courage to face challenges, love of self, and love of country. Without it, there is confusion, despair, and failure. Taken to the extreme fanatic level, it degenerates into destructive behavior, mistrust, divisiveness, exclusivity, and solitude. Cultural identity is also flexible because it evolves as it is enriched with life's experiences. When exposed to other cultures, it is possible to cross culture and coexist in harmony because culture is based on wisdom and understanding. But how and where one began, I believe, will always be there and remain as a point of reference towards moving forward. There is wisdom in a Filipino adage that goes, he who knows not where he came from could not move forward to where he wants to be. Therefore, cultural, cultural identity is important for survival in this world. Moving forward at this day and age, uh, the globalization of the world is advancing at phenomenal speed, due primarily to advancements in communications and technology. 50 years ago, I wondered what Southern Philippines was like. Now information is available in an instant through the internet. We could even e-meet the locals on the computer monitor via, via Skype or organize conference via online streaming. The world seems smaller because many places on Earth can now be reached in a matter of hours via air travel. Globalization helps widen our knowledge of other cultures, making more people uh, tolerant of each other. Knowing is the key to respect for other cultures and appreciation and care for nature and natural resources, the benefits of scientific explorations, breakthroughs in solving medical problems, control and prevention of spread of diseases, collaborations in sports like Olympics, international educational exchanges like the Fulbright Scholarship Program of the United States, traveling exhibitions, medical missions, housing programs like Habitat for Humanity, speed and communication and media and the impact of television, video, YouTube, and the internet superhighway is life changing. Filipinos in the late 20th century showed their solidarity in ousting a shrewd dictator <coughs> out of power by sheer number of people marching in millions to protest martial law. The event became known as the Philippine People Power Movement of 1986. Some decades later, People Power EDSA II was staged to topple a corrupt president. EDSA refers to E. De Los Santos Avenue, a major thoroughfare in Metro Manila, uh, where millions of people gather to protest. The four-day protest was accomplished nearly entirely through cell phone text messaging of Filipinos in the Philippines and Filipinos around the world uh, showing support of the movement. The globalization of the world through these phenomenal connections could transform governments, societies, racial and religious divides, and human rights abuse. World Organizations for Peace 
such as UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, and the UN, United Nations, encourage uh, negotiations to stop all forms of human rights abuse, such as the toppling of the Berlin, Berlin Wall, destroying apartheid in Africa, protecting the interests of uh, indigenous people around the world through preservation of culture and repatriation law. They keep in check aggressive behaviors globally by facilitating international dialogues and supporting peacekeeping forces. Other humanitarian organizations use internet to expose human rights abuse like sex slavery, uh, predatory child abuse, body organ trafficking, and so on and so forth. Glo globalization, however, has a downside to it. The, uh, the controversial free market, while providing easy access to commodities worldwide, is also, uh, uh, also converted the world into a consumer base. The third world, a mecca for cheap labor, and the gap between the rich and poor uh, wider than ever. The exportation of la labor to other countries destabilized, destabilizes local employment. Cheap labor, on the other hand, has become a new form of slavery, shifting issues from political to economic, and the victims are the people. Globalization, unfortunately, also has become instrumental to the slow erosion of the unique nuances in local culture due to the depersonalization uh, of uh, uh, consumer orientation of the world. Local theaters are slowly being replaced by home centers and videotapes. Department stores are competing with internet selling. Even church visits have declined in favor of televised rituals. The world has changed. The people seem closer because they experience and use the same things all over the world. While these examples are positive in defense of convenience for the demand of, the modern, of modern living, so much is lost on personal interaction as a consequence of the use of electronic interaction. I often catch people in restaurants gathered together on a table and texting on their cell phones rather than talking to each other. Online education is a growing trend, especially for working students. Um, one learns discipline through uh, online assignments. However, interaction with other students and the professors and passionate discussion and debates are diminished. Tradition is gradually lost in inventive food fusion. Uh, conception via in vitro fertilization, sperm banks, and surrogacy produce custom-designed babies. Death facilitated through Dr. Kevorkian machine replaced God in natural death. Uh, is international banking another way of avoiding taxes or hiding taxable wealth? The list could be endless, but with the exception of the family unit that still strive to stick together, tradition is gradually diminishing uh, into a depersonalized exterior experience. Now, I know that I have uh, very limited time. If we have time, I can present a, a slideshow of an exhibition that I curated last year, which is still traveling. It's called The Triumph of Philippine Art, and it's right there. It's not so <coughs> focused. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, it's well, that. Okay. Uh, 
th this is an example of an exhibition that will open at the Ayala Museum uh, on the 21st of July. It just closed at the Fisher Museum at USC, that is a University of Southern California, last April, and we actually uh, organized it at Montclair State University, where I work as the director of the George Siegel Gallery and the University Art Galleries. Um, and this is about uh, uh, Philippine art from uh, the martial law period to the present. And you would see here how Filipinos um, uh, took up the uh, interest to show what's happening in the Philippines on their own, on their own. So uh, how do I move from? Oh, here. This is a sample. So I will go through this very, very fast because we have very little uh, time left. This is uh, martial law being declared in the Philippines, 1972, September 21. President Marcos was the president at the time. You probably all know, uh, have heard about him. Next is a uh, protest. It, this is sheer people power, protesting martial law. That is more than 21 years later uh, in a uh, uh, famous uh, people power uh, movement of 1986. And then here is our national artist, uh, Ben Cab, uh, his Benedicto Cabrera, uh, protesting martial law. The title of this work is, it's an etching, it is called uh, 1081, which is a proclamation of martial law. Uh, and here are some of his other works. This is defining indigenous Filipinos turning from, from uh, uh, innocence to becoming, to becoming uh, uh, military people. And guess who the third one is, the one in red? That is communist China. It represents communist Chinese uh, uh, ideals, which entered the country because there was a lot of corruption in the country. So where there is corruption, there, things like this will be, attract, will be attractive. People want to find solutions to their problems. Next is, this is, uh, unfortunately it's been cut off, but this is, uh, Filipino-American immigrants coming into the United States. And uh, you will see here, uh, you know, Filipino-Americans in context. They are Filipinos, but they are Americans and trying to define themselves. And so this artist tried to portray that idea. And here are some other uh, protests uh, during martial law. This, done, this is done by uh, Pablo Bayan Santos. His name is uh, at the bottom left. Uh, and this is uh, uh, his most current work. This was done in 19, uh, in year 2010, and it's a protest about cheap labor. You will see that all the laborers that are doing this uh, construction are Filipinos, and they really are uh, uh, in danger most of the time, uh, probably unprotected by any kind of insurance. Uh, and uh, of course, you will see also the story of uh, Benigno Aquino, this is uh, probably uh, taken in the 1980s, uh, the, uh, the, the person who, was, who inspired the people power. Uh, he was killed and, uh, and uh, that sparked the uh, protest against uh, uh, martial law in the Philippines. And here are more recent, 1986, Athena Magkase Lopez, Awit Nang Isangina, Song of a Motherland, is um, um, uh, a painting of a mother who was incarcerated. And, uh, yeah, uh, incarcerated and um, uh, delivered her baby in prison. Uh, this, this is true because I even know this person. Uh, and another one of her works, uh, and uh, it's anticipating the uh, um, coming of uh, President Corazon Aquino um, during the, in 1986 was the uh, People Power. 
Uh, this is an example of agrarian uh, issues where people have been tilling this land for many years and never owned it. That is why they titled this work Untitled. And here's another example of this photograph. Uh, here's an example of uh, a drawing on toilet paper. Uh, it's 54 feet long toilet paper to, to demonstrate uh, the vast land of the Cojuanco family, uh, the family of the Aquino family, uh, that uh, is now being a subject of uh, agrarian reform. Um, and very much heated uh, topic in the Philippines right now. Here, and here's more examples of this uh, toilet paper. Uh, the artist incidentally used toilet paper because toilet paper is the lowest form of paper he could think of. When we exhibited this, he didn't want to put it on the wall. He said, put it on the floor because that's where it belongs. Powerful, isn't it? Uh, and so I said, I cannot protect it, so I have to put, uh, um, uh, I have to cover it with a glass. He said, use plexiglass. <laughs> Don't use anything special because it's not meant to be that way. So here it goes. And here again is, is a, a painting by Karen Ocampo, Ocampo Flores, who uh, wrote, uh, 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 whose work is a line of history, which means uh, she was uh, comparing the uh, indigenous period on the left, representing an indigenous uh, uh, woman versus to her conversion several hundred years later into Catholicism. That is demonstrated by the cross on her uh, chest. And here's an example of relationship between uh, a man and a woman. The woman became submissive. Many, many years ago, the Philippines uh, respected the, Philippine, the woman uh, better. They were called the babaylan, and they could, uh, uh, they could uh, express themselves. They were, uh, uh, they were major participants in the society, and that has deteriorated over uh, after colonization. Uh, so here you would see, it's self-explanatory. We call it Philippine Gothic, which makes reference to the American Gothic by uh, the artist Grant, yeah. Lou Grant. Uh, Grant, Wood. Grant Wood, I'm sorry, yes, thank you very much. Uh, and here uh, is, uh, uh, it, it's about the tarot card. Tarot card is what Filipinos uh, fall back on when they have problems because they want to uh, uh, solve their problems uh, through magical means. That's the best I could uh, say about this work. But this, this was done by Brenda Fajardo, who is very famous in the Philippines. Uh, another one, the uh, Filipinos wanted to assert themselves by, and, and their cultural, and their cultural identity by using local uh, imagery and local materials. These uh, drapes, the red drapes, are, are so uh, um, uh, demonstrative of the region and uh, uh, they came from. And here is more example of using local materials for the works. You would see that the background is made up of uh, um, bamboo uh, strips. Uh, and here is uh, done in year 2009, is called blemish. Blemish refers to all those people who died with it, who didn't have a voice. And, and laundering, laundering is, a, is some kind of cleaning but instead of cleaning, uh, blood comes out of, the, of this uh, laundering. So very powerful performance uh, piece by Raquel de Loyola. And more of, I'm sorry I have to speed up because I don't have much time and this is more of her work. And uh, uh, here is a, a, a lawyer who is an assist, associate uh, uh, solicitor uh, who is uh, protesting the, uh, uh, political dynasties, which is very strong in the Philippines. About 75% uh, of uh, the lawmakers in the Philippines belong to uh, political dynasties. Um, 
And uh, this is about vote buying, again, by uh, Michael Geronimo uh, uh, Gomez, and, uh, uh, which refers to vote buying. I don't have much time to explain this, but it is a very interesting uh, show. If you are in the Philippines on uh, between July and August, you will see it there, and there will be a lot of discussions about there. There, you would see a clown who is the voter trying to sell uh, his vote to the little guy, uh, the little guy in gray, who is the uh, the candidate trying to uh, sell the vote. And, and he stands on top of a yellow ballot box. Ballot box, uh, ballot box, that's correct, yes. Uh, okay, uh, this is a part of a, 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 a quad, a four-piece work that refers to agrarian reform. The haves, which is uh, uh, represented by the iron hand, and the little hands, which represent the uh, uh, farmers. But look at what is uh, behind them. What propels them are bullets. Very, very expressive work done in 2011. It's a direct uh, uh, um, challenge to agrarian reform issues in the Philippines. Uh, again, here is another one uh, done by a professor, uh, Leo Baya. Rigodon is a dance, uh, but in here you will see that the pictures that they use are not, uh, are not the regular chess pieces, but the faces of the different presidents of the Philippines. Uh, cannot talk much about it because I don't have much time. Here is the most uh, recent, this is a Filipino-American who is uh, either confused or fascinated about what is going on. Uh, he is a young artist and uh, he's, uh, his uh, works are huge and um, uh, uh, representing what he has heard or what he has learned, all summed up in one drawing. There is anywhere from the uh, medieval ages all the way to the atomic bomb and, uh, and the globalized world. It even includes some fantastic uh, sci war. <laughs> uh, and the, that is more of his works. This one symbolizes uh, 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 dream time was done by a New Yorker uh, who went home to the Philippines to answer Dr. Uh, the uh, Latvian, Latvian ambassador. Here is one of the effects of uh, Filipino Americans coming to the United States and going back to the Philippines, you know, and connecting uh, two or three different, uh, different uh, cultures. Basketball, who invented basketball? U.S., I think. But, yes, it is the favorite pastime of the Philippines. And, uh, oh, but how do you connect this to the Philippines? It's the pearl net. The net is made up of pearls, and the Philippines is the pearl of the Orient Sea. Okay? She is from Brooklyn. <laughs> okay, and that is a detail of the pearls. Uh, her name is uh, Christina Romilo. And this one, again, is a Filipino-American who grew up in Dayton, uh, New Jersey, went back to the Philippines, and, and uh, is now doing this miniatures. This piece is one inch by one inch. Incredible, isn't it? There's always that desire to connect to the country. There's always that desire to connect to the, to connect to the country, but at the same time, it carries with it the culture that the country has accumulated over the years. The, uh, uh, the embroidery in the back is very Spanish. Another example of his work. Another example of his works. Another example of his By the way, these are one inch by one inch, but they sell for $2,000 a piece at Hoffman Gallery down New York, downtown New York. Uh, and this one is another uh, protest. Uh, Mark Salvados is uh, from uh, San Francisco, and uh, uh, he photographed uh, graffiti uh, in the train stations. Time, yeah, I know. 
and uh, and this is his uh, work. This is his video, uh, which is uh, a testament of uh, uh, the masses, the masses that didn't have the, the money or the opportunity to voice their ideas, actually uh, made graffitis of uh, walls of the streets of Manila. I think this was in, in Manila. Uh, 